You are listening to the Pink Sugar Podcast, here to empower, motivate, and inspire you. I'm your host, Martha, and this is your Monday Motivation Podcast, reminding you that you are more powerful than you could ever imagine. You're capable of pretty much anything you're willing to work for, and you actually can change your life, one positive thought at a time. I'm so excited you're here, and I can't wait for you to hear today's episode. Yeah! Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Pink Sugar Podcast. I'm your host, Murtha, and today I have the pleasure of introducing you to Nikki Sturgis. Correct? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Nikki, and welcome. I'm so excited you're here today. Before we continue our conversation, um, I'm going to give you a little brief introduction about Nikki. Um, Nikki is a self-employed wellness consultant and life coach from Grand Junction, Colorado. <laughs> um, she is passionate about helping women that have gone through tough experiences of domestic violence and betrayal. She helps women rediscover their identity and find their God-given greatness so that they too can live a life filled with joy, smiles, and be free to go after their dreams. Mickey, like many women, has lived through many years of an abusive marriage and it took her over 10 years to be able to share her story. Mickey works really hard every day to live in a world where no woman is subject to violence, physical or emotional. Mickey dreams of times where women are empowered and transformed to be a better version of themselves and where both men and women live in harmony without fear. She knows the journey behind healing and she knows it takes time. Mickey also has a high motivation for helping those who desire to work at home. She helps others map out and outline strategies so that they can bring in passive income online. Mickey has found her calling and today she's here with me to share her story of healing and entrepreneurship. So first off, I want to thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me today. <laughs> um, thank you so much, Martha. <laughs> Yeah. Did you like your little introduction? Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> um, well, I'm happy we finally got the opportunity to connect. I know it's been a lot of back and forth, and but I'm, I'm so excited. I, I'm always watching your lives. Yeah. I see you on, on Facebook, so I'm like, I have to talk to her one day. It's, it's going to be awesome. So, you know, so Mickey, it's known that in order to have a great day, one must start with a good morning routine. <laughs> yeah. So can you share with us a little bit how you start your day, um, what your morning ritual is, what do you do to, you know, what do you have for breakfast? <laughs> Things like that. <laughs> I know. Oh, well, thank you so much, Martha, for having me, first of all, and thank you for that great introduction. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what I do in the morning <laughs> Like many moms, of course, you have to wake up earlier than anybody else if you want to do something for yourself, right? So I used to wake up a little bit earlier, but nowadays I'm so busy, I can't wake up any earlier than 6. I used to wake up like 5.30 and had a little bit more time, but now I wake up about 6. And the first thing I do is, of course, I have to drink my water and go to the bathroom and you know drink my water, lemon water, and then go straight to my scripture writing journal. And that's what I actually had a challenge, five-day challenge twice now, and sharing the way I do scripture writing journaling. But anyway, that's what I do. I do write the scripture, meditate on it, write, write the thought that comes, comes up to my mind, and also write the prayers. That takes about 20 minutes to 30 minutes. I try not to go over 30 minutes because then by then my boys, my husband and my son will start waking up and say, I have breakfast. You know? yeah. <laughs> and, like, and I would tell them, eat cereal. Yeah. <laughs> but um, most of the days that they, that's what they do. They eat cereal, oatmeal, you know, grits. We love grits. Oh. Um, so those are the, the main thing. And, it depends. My son, my middle son is so good. He wrote me a menu. Like my ah! yes, Tuesday is this. <laughs> that's, so, that's helpful. <laughs> I know it was helpful. And that's what I was um, following. Yeah. But now he moved to a boarding school. Mm -hmm. And I'm still sort of following. But, you know, I look at Monday and say, biscuit and gravy? Mm -mm, no. <laughs> <laughs> So that's what I do, but I do that and then um, send them off to work and school. I have to take my son to school. Um, so 
after that, we just go to workout, and that's how the day starts. Nice, awesome. It t- like it sounds uh, very familiar. Like right? <laughs> out here at home too. All morning. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The I only thing that. that I have really, really tried is the scripture writing, journaling, yeah. and meditating, and that really helped me set the tone for for the day, mm-hmm. and um, really. It's crazy, but it helped my intention to manifest during the day. And that's yeah. all God. God is, you know, guiding me through the day. And I just love that. Definitely. That's very helpful. Mm-hmm. Um, can you tell me a little bit about yourself? Where are you from? Oh, I'm from originally from Japan, as you can tell from my accent. Okay. Um, <laughs> Yes, I'm originally from Japan, but I have been here in the United States over 30 years now. So I won't say exact years. Yeah. <laughs> so that means I've been here longer than I was in Japan. Okay. But I, you know, go back and forth because more yeah. my family is still there. Um, my folks are gone now. My parents are, you know, deceased now. But my my sisters and everybody else are there. So I go back and forth. Oh, that's and nice. Yeah, and it's nice that you get to go back because some people come and it's hard for them to go back. But it's really it's yeah, great. it is it is hard. Um, but you know, I'm blessed to be able to go back if something were to happen. Like when my mom passed, I could just drop everything and go. Thanks to my husband, he just yeah. said, "Okay, go if you need it." And I went there like two months. And the, and then when my sister got sick last year, I had to drop everything and go. And I went there like six weeks to help her out. So yes, I'm blessed to be able to do that. Definitely, that's very nice. Yeah. So um, can we touch um, base on you know your relationship, um, your abusive relationship, and when did you gather up the courage to just get out? How 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 did all that happen? Okay, so um, I was married against my parents' will. <laughs> so I was very young. I've, uh, right after, actually, right after I came to United States, I went through this English. You know, English is a second language school. Um, passed through that, and then I went to start going to college to get. Uh, a degree in United States. I already graduated from college from Japan, but I wanted to pursue a further education in United States. That's where I met this guy. Mm-hmm. And, um, and against my parents' will, I started living with him and then um, eventually got married um, very fast. <laughs> and then abuse started right away, but I didn't realize okay. um, you know, in some cultures, like Jap- Japanese culture, male being very dominant is not so unusual. Yeah. You know? So um, when he was leading me, like, oh, you do this, do that. I was like, okay, that's, you know, part of marriage, part it's of so life. Normal. Yeah. Yeah. And um, when he started, like, physically violent to me, I was like, is this normal? I don't think it's normal, but, you know, one time I remember um, this was happening. So I consulted with my friend who I, whom I met um, through university that I went to. And this lady told me, you know, um, he got mad at you because maybe he was jealous and he loves you so much. Mm. And so I took it as that was a love <laughs> that's yeah. really skewed ladies it's skewed yeah. love but that's how I took it and yeah. I said okay well maybe I shouldn't have um you know made him mad okay well I will learn that lesson and so I kept doing that you yeah. know during the first you know like several months and I'm thinking oh, this is horrible I don't want to live like this but you know I kept blaming myself right mm-hmm. I kept blaming It's like, okay, if I didn't cook that thing, um, the the thing that he didn't like, he wouldn't be mad. If I didn't wear this clothes, um, he wouldn't be mad. Therefore, I shouldn't wear this. You know, that kind of, it's just Mm -hmm. all skewed thinking. Like it's, yeah. Yeah, it just chips away your self-confidence, your worth. And um, 
when I started working, I started making money. At, at that time, at one time, I was in the sales position. It was, I was a recruiter, and that was a commission job. So I used to bring in some, you know, good money. Okay. And he told me, you know, he want, one day he would say, I'm so proud of you. And then the other, the next day he would say, just because you're making this much money, that doesn't mean that you're worth anything. Oh. Um, you know, stuff like that. It was just up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, he would constantly belittle me. And, you know, he would tell me, oh, you're a little girl. You don't know anything. Um, you're not worth anything. Nobody will love you on the way I do. Um, all these little things chipped away my confidence, my worth, self-worth. And I kept questioning, just questioning myself. Oh, who am I? Why am I here? What yeah. am I doing? But in the midst of all that, still thought I had an angel syndrome, air quote, angel syndrome. It that means that you think that you are sent by God to change this guy, to change his world, okay. you know, help him to love himself, love others. And I was used by God to change him, you know, or help him and, and pull him back out of this dark world or whatever it was, <laughs> you know, because he did have a terrible childhood, okay, a terrible life um, himself. His, his father was abusive. And so it was a cycle that was going on. And so I, I, I couldn't like pull myself to say, well, it's his fault. I knew he had gone through all these problems in the past. So I felt pity. I felt sorry for him too. Um, anyway, so at the end of 13 years, I already had uh, one son. Um, after 10 years, I decided, well, I was getting older, you know? <laughs> so I said, I want to have a baby. And I did. Um, so um, he... I had a son, he was, I think he was three years old when this happened, but um, I was getting really busy with my work. I was in the managerial position. I had to go to Japan, um, taking the, all the employees, you know, who had 10 years and to Japan. And we, I was in HR, I, I was an HR director. So I went with them and um he accused me of having an affair. He accused me of all these things when I came back. You know, here I was. I was really happy after a great trip to Japan. I came home and he was accusing me. And he was like, here's your son. You know, I, you had a good time. I, it's my time to have a good time. He just left me with my son and just left and went out, you know, for a drink or whatever. And... And then, and then came home and I was thinking, I, this is not the way to live. Yeah. This is just not the way to live. So I was looking for an opportunity when he was in a good mood. So when we were watching a movie or something together and I, he was in a good mood. So I said, you know, um, this keeps happening. It keeps happening. These accusing me and it's just not right. So why don't we separate? I wasn't even saying divorce. I said, let's just give a, a little distance between us. And you think about what this relation is, go, you know, where it's going. I have to do the same because I feel like I need that time alone. Mm -hmm. and he, at that time, he was like, I guess he was in a good mood. He said, okay. And he looked at me like, what are you talking about? But um, he, that day just went by like calmly. And the next day, I, I, I think it was a, a weekend. And when my son was sleeping in the other room, he brings out the gun and points at me and tells me that, you know what? You are making me mad. If you are leaving, then I'm going to kill you. Oh and I said, oh, you know, it just really shocked me. Yeah. And 
I was thinking, this is coming to this. It's getting worse, you know? And in my head, I was like, okay, if he tells me, if you don't make me mad, I won't do this. So promise me you are not going to make me mad anymore. Well, I can't promise. You can't promise anybody yeah. how yeah. other people feel, right? Yeah. Even if I say something that it's a joke, if he takes it as offense and gets mad, that's on him, not me. Yes, definitely. I mean, and, and that goes for anybody. Like you, if you get offended by anything anybody says, it's really on you, not right. Me. Yeah. So I I thought about it, and. You know, everything was so blur now, but I thought about it at that time and said, you know what, uh, uh, you're telling me to not make you mad anymore, but I've been trying that for 13 years. It's not working. Therefore, I cannot promise you. I cannot promise you that. And therefore, you just go ahead and shoot me. I, t I told him, go ahead and shoot me because I can't, I can't promise you. Yeah. And if you want me to leave, and that's all that that's what it's come to be then go ahead and shoot me and i could tell he was shaking and he well he was pointing a gun at me but he lowered the gun he lowered the hand and told me i just remember so clearly you, he said you are crazy and and i'm looking i'm thinking okay please god help me but at that time who is crazy here? Yeah. You yeah. know, but he was, he was pacing. I could just tell he was so furious and he was going back and forth. And I saw an opportunity. I ran to the bathroom and locked the door and I don't know what he did. He maybe went out. I, I felt, I think I heard the door close. So maybe he went out, came back. I'm not sure. And I'm not sure how long I was in the bathroom, but I just locked myself and I sobbed and sobbed and, and I prayed and, but I knew my son was sleeping on the, in the other room. Okay. So I knew I couldn't stay there. Yeah. And I just prayed, I prayed. Um, and then how many hours later, maybe he said, just come out. I'm not going to do anything to you. So I said, okay, well, you know, put, put the gun away or whatever. I just said, okay. And I came out and of course I went straight to my son's room mm -hmm. and um, he was still sleeping. So it must have not been too long. And, but anyway, he, he calmed himself down, I think, but he kept saying, don't get me mad like this. Don't get me, me mad like this. Yeah. Said, okay. Well, okay. And I even apologized. I said, I'm, I'm sorry. You know what? Forget it. Forget what I said. We'll just stay together. But I knew there was some, this is not the way to live. Yeah. So I think the next day when I went to work, I contacted pastor that who I've been consulting for many, many years. Yeah. And he gave me resources and um, I planned I plan to just leave, but those, um, what happened was his business trip was already scheduled. Okay. So I knew, I think in two weeks or so, he was leaving out of country yeah. to go to business trip. So, um, yeah, that's what I planned. I was scared, scared. Yeah. So it, it so afterwards it was, once he left, then that was your time to. Yeah. So what I did was I went to, instead of going to my friend's house, um, cause I've done that be prior to the, that time. And I went right back to him and I kept go, going back to him. So I decided this time I need professional help. I just decided I need professional help. So I'm going to the shelter because I knew myself. I knew how weak I was. So I said, okay, I'm just going to go to, so that's why we, I picked to go to, I chose to go to a domestic violence shelter, the women, women's shelter. Yeah. And I was allowed there for 50 days. That's like the maximum that anybody was allowed to go. Mm -hmm. They helped me get the restraining order. 
they allow me to, you know, get a counseling and we had a small group every night, you know, those things, just resources are abundant. It's very, very helpful. That's very, that's so helpful. yeah, for 50 days I was there. Meanwhile, oh my goodness, he was leaving messages after messages at my work. My, you know, I had a voicemail at work and then he was doing that and he even lied about the dog dying, all these things. Um, but they kept saying, you know what, don't listen to them. But, you know, my, my message, at my voicemail at work was just like blowing up because so many, and he was even leaving, my assistant actually was listening to the, those voicemails and, and uh, she was like, oh my gosh, your husband is leaving all these messages. I'm like, I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry you have to listen to this. Don't listen. So I, I started listening instead of her listening because I didn't want her to like feel so terrible. Um, but it was, it was, yeah, it was not pleasant. <laughs> but I'm, gl I'm so glad that I was in the shelter because seeing my son, three-year-old, like, sobbing for her his papa you know he was really crying it's a papa he missed him so much and and um and also you know feeling like oh do i should i go back or not for for his sake for you know my son's sake um all these thoughts were just coming around and and that the counselors the small group all that really helped me yeah that's that's very that that it's excellent that you had so many people and you decided to surround yourself with all these people that oh help. yes because it's, it's hard so important yeah it's so important need the help yeah and, and, and one of the counselors mm -hmm. told me one time because i was so like sure i said okay i have to go back because my son is just crying for him so much and she said, you know what? You remind me of this lady because I'm Asian. Mm -hmm. So she said she reminded me of this lady who was Korean. And she said, this lady came back three times to domestic violence shelter. And she said, yes, he promised me he's not going to do this again. He's changing. So I'm going back. So he, she did three times. Mm -hmm. And she said she never came back. And I said, oh, so everything worked out. She goes, no, she was killed. Oh, my gosh. And I, th my heart sank. No. And she said, so please, please think about what you're saying. Yeah. And she didn't want to say that to scare me, but mm -hmm. she wanted me to really think about what I'm going back to. Yeah. It gives me chills just I know it was like oh my goodness you know I felt so so bad for the for the lady and she said that's not the first case she they've seen them you know yeah they've seen those people so that's why she said please think about this yeah. and I um I really that really woke me up okay I should not go back there mm -hmm. I you know, so I kept thinking about bad times, not the good time. You know, this is one thing, advice that I want to say. <laughs> if, you, if you're in that relationship, the abusive relationship, and you left, and because you go through this mourning process, you know what I mean? Even if it was so bad, you still feel like I love him. Mm -hmm. I you still feel like, oh, maybe I should go back for the sake of children. You know, those thoughts are natural it comes back to you mm -hmm. but when that happens think of bad times that's the only time you don't want to you know you don't want to be negative and no this time that kind of time you think about bad times that you had how terrible that was yeah that will help you move forward with your new life not the bad life that yeah. you have it's sometimes you have to weigh out more negatives than positives because mm -hmm. they're in this situation, yes. Mm -hmm. Definitely. And, you know, some people think that it's, it's just, you know, it's as easy as get out and just leave. Um, but it's not, it's not that easy. You know, somebody from the outside who doesn't know and is not feeling all the feelings you're feeling can say, you know, just leave. It's, it's, but it's not that easy. Oh, so, it's not. 
what what advice would you give to somebody who who has that mentality of well it's okay to tell my friend just leave you know it, it's a little bit to me i think it's a little bit ignorant you kind of have to think yeah. past how you're feeling when you're giving somebody advice you know what i mean um and what what would you say to those people who think it's as easy as just leave you yeah. know yeah it's hard because those people i don't blame them you yeah. know like they don't know mm -hmm. so they think i I've, i've been told them many times so, you know if you're so unhappy why don't you just leave yes yes well it's not that easy first of all you are scared mm -hmm. i was super scared what is what's gonna happen if i just walked away is he gonna come and hit my back of my head Mm -hmm. or you know do something i don't know that right we don't know because it's already happened in the past you know you are kicked or punched or you know shoved if that's the case you already have experienced that so i was thinking what if i just walked away is he gonna come and attack me you know what i mean so that was one and then also i was scared of am i gonna be able to live on my own Yes. You know, that's another thing. I was like, I was totally doubting my self-worth, self-confidence. It was just gone. And, um, and because, you know, he tells you, nobody's going to love you the way I do. And you're not worth anything. You, you, you can't be even be here because, you know, I was an immigrant, right? Yeah. You can't even be here if you weren't for me. Yeah. You know, I'm going to have you deported or... <sighs> you know, those kind of things. I wasn't afraid of being deported. I don't, you know, I loved living here, but if he come, came to that, of course, you know, I will leave, but I wasn't here illegally. So, you know, he couldn't take that away. But anyway, all these things are going on. It's, it's really complicated. So what I would say is to be a friend and listen and Sometimes we don't need an advice <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. um, because in the heart of hearts, we know, we know, and sometimes they need a confirmation. Sometimes, you know, what I did, I'm a permission seeking person, you know, I have been, so I'm trying to not to. Because there's no permission, you know, in this adult world, you know, when you're little, can I have this candy? Yes, you, you may, you know, or can, may I have go, go to the bathroom? Yes, you may. You get to, you have to ask permissions from adults or teachers, you know. But when you become an adult, really, there's no permission. You have full permission to be you, mm -hmm. full permission to be powerful and strong. Mm -hmm. Yet, you've, I felt like I was seeking permission. I, I think I disgusted my friend. <laughs> because i said that so many times i said do you think it's good to leave and she'll say sure you can yeah and then i won't leave mm -hmm. and you know i'm sure she was like oh, you you asked me that one time she said you asked me that like five years ago same yeah. question yeah you know you've been in this situation for five years it's about time and i still didn't leave yeah so it's sometimes it's just so many emotions and, and yeah. so much going on And it's overwhelming and you don't know at some point you get to a place where you don't know what a good decision is and what a bad decision is it's just yeah. a combination of so much um so much but you know my son um actually thinking about my son while he was crying for him and i saw him missing his dad i did not want him to grow up in that situation I didn't want him to think it was okay for dad to belittle mom all the time. I didn't want him to, to disrespect women. I didn't want him to think it was okay to use violence mm -hmm. if she is a little naggy or, yeah. you know, because I'm not saying I'm a saint. I was a little nagging mom or wife you know or i mean wife. that's normal it's normal it's not yeah. something that you should get 
at least put down for you know exactly. nobody's perfect like, nobody's perfect i know so ladies again just because you are not perfect that doesn't mean that you deserve to be yes to punished be hit or punished exactly yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. it just um that is a no no but you know at that point my head was skewed <laughs> i was like what well, is that normal is that okay <laughs> Yeah. You know, oh yeah, I deserve that. I deserve that. You know, I kept saying that I deserved it, but no, I didn't. You didn't, no. Okay. Yeah, nobody does. Right, nobody but does. I, I know it's. A, I know it's a long journey. You know, it's. It takes a lot, uh, many years of healing. But oh, at yeah. what point in your journey did you feel it was time for you to help other women? Was it right away um, that you were like, I want to help other women? Um, not go through what I'm going through or did it take some time for you to heal and better yourself before you felt that way? Yeah. Good question. Mm -hmm. You know, when I, right after I um, got out, I felt I've learned all these things, right? Because of the resources that I went through and I was like ready. I was like, Oh, I need to help other women. You know, this is not the way to live. And, and I was thinking that, but I know God stopped me because I needed to heal first. Yeah. That seed was in there in my heart. I could, but every time I spoke with somebody who had gone through, I cried together with that woman, right? I was, I would be in it, drenched in it together mm -hmm. with that person. When you are doing that, you are not there to help. Mm -hmm. You know, you can, it's like a misery loves company. Yes. You dig deeper into misery if you do that. Um, so I realized, I, you know what, I do need to heal. So I kept going back. To, uh, my counseling, um, I think it was provided for a year, I think, after I left the shelter. Mm -hmm. And I even paid for it um, after that. I went back to, and then, oh, my goodness, I was so blessed to have this pastor from my church, my previous church. Um, he is a gifted counselor. And he's in Southern, Southern California. But anyway, I always had him and I had a small group to go to. And whenever I had any problems or, you know, wanted to talk, he was available. And I, I would talk to him. He would pray with me. And, Actually, God was my anchor, mm -hmm. has been an anchor, and that really helped me. But um, I had to go through healing, right? And then meanwhile, um, I met my current husband, and life takes over, and he is such a gentle, kind person, 180 <laughs> degrees difference. Yes. And I thank God because God, you know, I... I prayed actually, say, God, you know what? I cannot find a right guy. Yes. <laughs> I, don't, I don't, you know, trust my judgment. I don't, you know, so I didn't actually look. I asked God to just bring those two people to me. And then, you know, I was, I guess, lucky. My friends all of a sudden start introducing me to their friends. You know, so okay. yeah. this, um, my current husband also came through Blind Date. Like my friend, oh, you know, nice. yeah, I introduced me to, so I feel like God gave me to him, but during that time, still, I had lots of emotions, lots of things happened. Mm -hmm. And actually I decided this is time. It's about two years ago, two, two or three years ago, I heard a voice say, Mickey, it's time. And every sermon I heard, every book that I read pointed towards that. That the message was, you've gone through so much. You have learned so much. Don't hoard the information. It's time for you to share and help others. Don't hoard, your, hoard this information yeah. that you have. Don't hoard this experience you had. You have so much to share. And I kept hearing that. And I'm like, God, no, I'm not ready. I'm not ready. And I kept hearing that. 
yeah. and so that I, I sat on this um, idea of having a group of women or the movement. Mm -hmm. I sat on that and I sat on the idea of maybe life coaching. Mm -hmm. And and this year, it really, this January, God show up in such a huge, huge way that there was no denying. And even that, it's been taking two months, uh, you know, two months since then. And um, I've taken a lot of steps. Like I've done two challenges about the scripture writing journaling challenge. I have offered um, group coaching program. And that's actually starting um, towards the end of May, April. And then I am also um, launching a podcast. Nice. So, I'm so yeah. excited for you. I know it's yeah. moving. Yeah. But um, it's all come from that heart of really helping other women who might have gone through it and need some guidance. Like um, I was talking to one other friend the in the herg podcast you know there are a lot of resources available so use that a lot of resources in domestic violence awareness um there are counselors domestic violence shelters mm -hmm. those things are abundant yes but once you go through it then you feel alone i felt alone at that time you know you will give away my my age but <laughs> but at that time there was no facebook Yes. It was like AOL, you got mail. That that was about what we had. Yeah. Um, so, you know, we had to, I really sought out small groups from church. But I, sometimes I wished that I had some group like, now we, we have a Facebook group. You yes. know? Isn't that amazing? There's, I know. You can connect with anybody from any part of the world. And, and yes. You know, yes. We're connecting right now and we're realizing this podcast. Mm -hmm. I, I, am, I always say I'm so grateful for the internet because I've met so many amazing people. Exactly. Yeah. So that's what I wanted to use to reach out to many women in the world really the world oh definitely and to empower them and encourage them and there you know show them there is a hope yes. you know because sometimes you feel like you're so worthless it's so hopeless mm -hmm. and there are a lot of people who commit suicide because of it yeah and that is uh, that is really sad and heart-wrenching you know we have so much power take back our power and you know that's why the, the, the word rise up women came up to me and said, you know what? That is so like, so matching. <laughs> you know? And it's so true. Like we need to empower each other. We need to, you know, be there to listen to each other. And I think that it's amazing that you're starting a podcast to reach people in other parts of the world, because yes. we are so lucky to live in, in a country where we're free to speak mm -hmm. and say what we want Yes, especially now with the internet, we can just do and say whatever we want. But there's places in this world where you can't, and there's right. no way for you to even uh, reach out to your neighbor about what's going on in your in your life because people just sometimes don't take you seriously. Oh, and, so true, so yeah. true. Yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm so excited for you. I'm so excited for, I can't wait for you to come out with your podcast and yeah. everything that you're doing. I mean, even just your Facebook lives daily, I think it's very helpful. Um, oh, thank you. Yeah, it's it's excellent. And I'm, I'm so happy that I got the opportunity to meet you. <laughs> you too, me too. So tell me, what motivates you every day and keeps you, you know, keeps you going and helps you just... Not, I, I won't say forget because it's something that's obviously helping you as well, but mm -hmm. it helps you heal what happened in your past. You know, one thing, again, I do pray. Okay. And ask for God. That's the first thing I, I do. I pray to God and say, God, please help me. That is a really important part of my life. Okay. And when the thought comes in to my head, oh, I used to just dwell on it. 
I used to like dwell on it so much that ruined my day. And even now, sometimes when, you know, my husband is a wonderful husband, but we do have problems. Yeah, that's <laughs> there's no one perfect in this world you know um so sometimes we have that issue and it does bother me and but when that happens it's a discipline you need to discipline yourself to say this is not me this is actually satan talking to me therefore get behind me <laughs> you know sort of let go it's it's like balloon that you have you know string in, in the balloon right and are you holding on to this um forgiveness resentful and all these bad emotions it's good to have emotions that is there to you know warn you about something is wrong right so it's okay to have anger it's okay to have a resentment but you don't want to wallow in it you don't want to hang on to it. So what you do is if you want, you let go, let go. Yeah. You know, sometimes what we do is we have all these strings to the balloon and they say, no, I'm not letting go. And yeah. Really yeah. Yeah. Do that. Kept, yeah. I, I just kept doing that. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, I have to do it. Like karate chop. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So you have to just say, whoo, whoo, go away, go away. <laughs> and it, it's a dis- really a discipline. It's not... It's not natural because we're sort of, our brain is to, it's programmed to keep you safe, you know? Mm -hmm. So that's why I say, oh, no, no, no. If you're trying to do something new, your brain starts to think about, oh, how to get you back on this comfort zone. Mm -hmm. You you have to come back this way. Otherwise, you, you know, you're stepping out. That's not good, you know? But you really have to consciously tell them, no, this is not serving me. Mm -hmm. You have to think, this is not serving me. Unforgiveness is actually killing me instead of the the person who did it to me. Yeah. Or resentment or anything like that. So that's what I try to do. You know, you know, when I first move out of the situation, um, domestic violence shelter, that I think she was the social worker. Anyway, she let me wear a rubber band around my wrist. And she told me, every time you tell yourself how stupid you are, you pinch yourself with that rubber band. And tell tell yourself, I'm beautiful, I'm wonderful, I'm uniquely made. Or whatever it is that to reframe it. Because I used to say, how stupid am I? to stay in that situation for 13 years. How stupid. You know, I said that a lot to myself. So every time I say how stupid, you know, even when I'm driving, I just pull the rubber band and, you know, (laughs) pull it back and go, ouch. Yeah, that's a great tip. I I like that. I I had to do that for a year (laughs) because I kept saying it. I know. And, and it's hard. I mean, even, even if not even, you know, going through something so traumatic, you still put yourself down. I mean, it's mm-hmm. something that's easy to just think, you know, I'm not good enough. Right. Oh, totally. <laughs> and yeah, you say that all the time. And then, you know, the one thing that my pastor told me and that really helped me was I was saying all these things to her, to him, you know, it's like, I feel like I'm such worthless, you know, a person and I'm so stupid that I have been going through. I picked the wrong person and blah, blah, blah. And he was listening and he said, Mickey, if you were listening like this from your friend, what would you say to your friend? Would you say that to your friend that you, yes, you are stupid. You're, you're worth it. Worthless. And you, would you say that to your friend? He's, I said, no, I would never say that to my friend. And he said, then why are you saying that to yourself? Mm-hmm. And that really woke me up. I said, well, that because, because it's me. Mm-hmm. I can say whatever I want to me. Yeah. Said, no, you don't do that. Be kind to yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, God made you. So you are unique. You are beautifully made. Yeah. You're insulting God if you're insulting yourself. 
that really helped me every time I thought about how stupid I am, how ugly I am, how fat, skinny, whatever it is. I said, God made me this way. Mm -hmm. He said, it's perfect. Oh, that's so nice. You know? Yeah. That's yeah. it. Um, <laughs> oh, my God. I feel like you're just, like, you know, preaching to me. And <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> preaching. <laughs> I love it though. I love it. I'm I'm just mesmerized by everything you're saying. <laughs> but um, okay, so let's go to you know how can we help or how can someone help? What are some signs that you know we can look for in men or in women um, that might be in an abusive relationship and and how can they be? How can we help them? Yeah, it's it that that's a touchy touchy situation yeah. you know because i didn't tell anyone even the pastor he was shocked when i call called him and said this happened because i never all that years of counseling together i never told him that i was abused mm -hmm. physically um and so he even he even apologized. You know, he said, "I'm so sorry. I didn't even realize that you were going through this." And I here I was. I was trying to, you know, be hanging in there, and and divorce is not an option. That kind of thing. I he was like, "I'm so sorry," mm -hmm. but it wasn't his fault because I didn't tell him that. And there, are women, I'm sure of it, hiding. Yeah because they feel embarrassed or they feel ashamed or they just don't want them, you know, because we want to feel, we want to look like we're all put together, right? Uh, yeah, we want, to, we want to look like we're in control of our life. And, and yeah. that, as humans, it's, it's really not possible. But right, but that's how we want to portray yeah. ourselves. So, but, you know, as an experienced person, I can tell if, woman is under somebody's control like just a little things like oh you know let me ask my husband if I can borrow his car to go to your house mm -hmm. on, on Saturday or you know just to keep it's it's not just because oh my car is in the shop and I have to ask my husband you know mm -hmm. if I can use my his car mm -hmm. it's it's just a little subtle um way of talking tone of voice and also the the demeanor mm -hmm. you know their shoulders down um maybe now look, not looking in your eyes when they say something um or you know um well he just gives me this much money per month and i don't have any uh, money money to spend mm -hmm. it's that's different from oh we have a budget and I was just, you know, up, allocate this much to, uh, you know, eating out, this much to gift. And that's not that. It's just a little different, subtle mm -hmm. difference. Oh, it's like a lower self-esteem. And, mm -hmm. and also up. they're constantly needing to ask, you know, mm -hmm. I need to ask always. Um, or he's not allowing her to drive or he's not allowing to go places and he, she needs to always ask permission or need to ask, um, you know, need to report to okay. him where she was going, with whom she was going with, you know, all these things. So if you, ca you know, physical abuse is very, sometimes it's... Um, like obvious. Obvious. Mm -hmm. You know, the thing is, though, abuse abusers sometimes know not to hit in a place where people can see yeah it's very calculating mm -hmm. so outside you can't see um one time he hit me on my arm in my arm on the side right below where the um you know that short sleeve okay mm -hmm. and then it, it could like hide if it was longer sleeve Mm -hmm. But I was wearing a short sleeve and I, my boss saw a, a bruise and he, he looked at it and goes, what happened? I, I just said, oh, um, door hit me. Mm -hmm. And, but it was a place where he hit me. And um, he was a little bit skeptical. 
that I said, you know, door, really? But, you know, it's like, yeah, yeah, door just, you know, I bung, uh, bumped into it. And he just didn't say anything. But it does happen. And so you have to really watch. And then I had to, one time I had a, a bruise in my eye. And I said the same thing. I fell down. Oh, okay. You know? Yeah. So if you keep seeing bruises, um, you know, in the face or everywhere, then, and then she always says, oh, I fell down. Oh, I'm really clumsy. You know, these things, it might be, it just may be. So it just have to keep observing. And then you might want to say, are you okay at home? Mm -hmm. And most of the time they'll break down okay. because they're up to here. You know what I mean? If they are just drowning then you'll come out every yeah. time somebody asked me i would cry i know i used to cry and but of course i didn't say that i'm just oh i'm just having issues right now you know is, is there anything um you can tell anyone right now that is actually going through um a tough time and or an, is is in an abusive relationship and really doesn't know how to end it um Oh, God. Right now. Um, I, if, if you are going through, I'm so sorry. This is horrible, horrible thing to go through. But one thing that I would say is don't be hiding. Okay. Just, you know, consult with somebody. And um, okay. if you don't want to talk to a friend, I would just consult the professional. You know, somebody outside of your circle of friends um i think it's important because friends sometimes are too close to you you know and you don't want to share anything that is um embarrassing maybe too close yeah too close to home embarrassing you feel embarrassed you don't there's nothing to be ashamed of there's nothing to be embarrassed about but if you feel that then talk to a professional and there are a lot of free resources available. Mm -hmm. And please, please don't go to a place where you feel so hopeless and helpless. And only thing you can think about is to kill yourself. Mm -hmm. Don't go there, please. It's just too, life is too precious to go there. Mm -hmm. So I would seek out the professional help. And then there is a specific steps that you have to take you need to plan you you know of course if you're getting really battered right now then just leave just leave mm -hmm. and call the police you know but if you can like in my case you know he calmed down and i let the water settle you know like dust settle and i was really trying very hard to keep everything calm, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. And even even during that time, two, two, I think it was two weeks after that, I planned. He was pinching me. He was, like, slapping me, you know, like he, would, he was doing that. But I kept telling myself, two more weeks, two more weeks, <laughs> you know. And that's what I did. But um, if you can tolerate that much i would plan plan of escape just plan it and do that okay yeah that's great advice planning definitely mm -hmm. and now i hear a lot of people you know they say all the time that they're um struggling to be creative they're feeling stressed or they don't know what their next move should be in their life or in business um what advice can you give them Oh gosh, you know, this one, the first thing I would like anybody to do is step back. Okay. If you're entrenched with your business, your life and all these things, you won't see it. Yes. <laughs> you know, it was so obvious to me when I was, um, I think it was a couple of years ago when I went, um, when I started something, I started a business and I didn't, I thought, I, only thing I saw was like people having fun. It's like, wow, this is so much fun and they're making money. I wanted, I wanted to do the same. So I got in 
But I was getting into it. I was escaping from something and I was getting into something and I was putting more stuff on my plate mm -hmm. because I was just busy, right? But luckily at that time, I had a vacation. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it was just, it was a good, good time. So I, I knew I was getting into a vacation, but I started this business. And when I stepped back, I realized it was not good for me. It was not for me. Mm -hmm. I realized what I should be doing rather than getting into a new business. Okay. So it's really good to take a step back and assess where you are in life, your business, you know, wherever you are. I think it's, it's important to take a step back. Okay. To, yeah, that's the first thing I would do. I would do it because you know, I might not be sleeping either. You know, yeah. <laughs> busy. yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's what I would do, and then just prioritize. You know, and also many people don't do it. I, yeah, me included, is writing things down. Yes, that's you know, because we have laptop, we have phone, you have tablet. You, you know, tend to type everything, and I used to do that too. Uh, one of the coaches, she told me you know what, ditch the planner, go digital. So I was trying so hard to go digital, like trying to use Google Calendar and da, da, da. I failed. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard. Sometimes it's easier to just grab a piece of paper and plan your day on a piece of paper. <laughs> oh, yes. Yeah. So I went back to, to the planner. I'm a planner girl now. But I still use my phone. But, um, but something about writing down, so if you are like drenched in everything, then just write down, here's life. These are the things that I, I want done or need done. And then here's a business. These are the things that I would like to do. Which one is more real, you know, realistic and be able to do right now, you know, prioritize okay. the, the boys, you know, my husband, <laughs> we have so much <laughs> in the list. Yeah. Well, Mickey, thank you so much for the therapy session. I just want, uh, you know, um, from here on, I just want to learn a little bit more about you and, and how you see yourself, you know, in the future. And, and, you know, I guess my first question would be, what are you proud of, of yourself most for? I am proud that I've lived through all kinds of <laughs> challenges. Um, you know, of course, I didn't have choice, but at one point, I did think about stop, like, ending my life. Mm -hmm. I was such in depression. I think that was also a side effect of depressing, uh, antidepressant. Okay. But I was scared of myself because I was thinking those thoughts. Okay. Um, but I, you know, I really sought out professional help in that actually I said this is not me so recognizing who I was said this is not me why am I thinking these thoughts I don't want to kill myself yet these thoughts were coming like flooding to me and I was proud and that I recognized that <laughs> but I've gone through you know a lot of challenges I'm still here and I'm looking forward to my future you know whatever the many number of years that i have left you know i i know there's purpose in in life and that's what i would like to um use fully in this life you know god has and i'm proud of you for that too and oh. that takes a lot of courage just to recognize that you know there's something wrong so that's yeah. Um, can you tell me, and this one's a little tough, <laughs> can you tell me of a time, um, that you failed, you failed so bad, but you got yourself back up many times. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know what? Instead, I decided my current coach says this too. I've decided there is no failure. Okay. If I talk about failure, oh my goodness, there are tons and tons of failures. 
mm. you know, starting from when I was little, um, you know, I, I was told I was a slow runner. So I was always in the back. If I went through a relay or something, I was very slow. Um, you know, so if you say failure, yeah, that's a failure. Uh, businesses. I've got into so many businesses yeah. and I got into, you know, I came to a certain level, like network marketing, for example. Mm -hmm. I was on the way to, you know, really higher level, rank advanced. I could have done that. No, I decided like something stopped me. So that if you can say that, it's a failure. Okay. Right. Um, I was laid off one time. Um, you know, the company wasn't doing well, so it was laid off, but I was one of those people who I was, you know, in the layoff, uh, group. Okay. And if you see it like failure, yeah, that could be a failure, but I decided I'm going to see this as a failure, not a failure. It's an opportunity to learn. Yeah. I launched twice my, um, you know, coaching program. Well, no revenue. Okay. If I see a failure, yeah, I failed. But again, I learned so much yeah. for doing that. Oh, excellent. So, I love that. Yeah. So that <laughs> is a dodging. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's like a game. <laughs> um, well, okay. So how do you continue to innovate? Um, what inspires you to keep going? You know, you, you talk about you've, you've failed many times, but what keeps you going? What, how do you? come up with new ideas and new business plans. <laughs> oh gosh. You know what? Right now I am so inspired. God has given me this vision. God has given me this idea of helping women, serving women who need this. And um, there is a gap right after you go through like domestic violence or even, you know, I, we didn't touch upon betrayal. Betrayal is huge. And I've gone through that. And, um, once you go through like professional therapy and psychotherapy and, you know, go through these small groups at one point you have to move on. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but you're still healing. Yeah. There's that, like the gap, you okay. know, I'm still healing too, but I may be a, a step or two ahead of those people who just came out of the relationship. Mm -hmm. So that's where I come in as a coach. Okay. I'm okay. not going to give you everything that, you, you know, like a therapist, I'm not going to tell you, Hey, this is what you need to do, but I can coach you and mentor you where you, you may be going. Okay. But your goal is your goal, not my goal. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's where I come in and I, that's what I really would like to help. Okay. Um, like that extra push in between. Yeah. You know, yeah. just a, you know how coaches are. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Think about the sports, you know, yeah, like yeah. The, those Olympians have coaches. Yeah. 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 Like practicing and drills mm -hmm. and continuing that, that, yeah what the therapist helps you with mm -hmm. things like that. Okay. That's excellent. Um, how do you wind down? How do you relax? How do you just shut your mind? And oh gosh. <laughs> I know that's hard. <laughs> it's funny, but you know what? I, okay. I, please don't laugh. But before I go to bed, I listen to like, um, another like affirmation. Okay. But, after that, if my mind still keeps going, what I do is I play spider. Do you know what spider oh, is? on your phone? The the, the uh, card game, right? It's a, it's a solid, solid. Yeah. Oh, okay. I love that. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, somebody That's told awesome. me about the spider like many years ago. And I, you know, I liked solitaire. My yeah. mom used to play solitaire with the card. And I started doing that. And then. And at one day I was like laying in my bed and I didn't want to think about anything, but I couldn't stop my brain. So I said, okay, let me play solitaire. So I started playing spider and you know, this, this, um, solitaire, what is it called? Yeah. Spider mm -hmm. has a, um, like easy, difficult, like whatever that there is a, um, rank. 
Okay. And I am right before expert. That oh, means yeah. like a gold. <laughs> and I keep like stop there, but oh my goodness, it's it makes me sleepy. Okay. Because you have to think about the numbers. <laughs> right? Yeah. Oh my god, cool. Yeah, so I play spider when if I wanted to like wind down and just go to sleep. I sp- I, play I, I really I I can I understand that a lot because um my husband has a, a pretty stressful job and his way of winding down at night is playing video games. So he'll sit down and he <laughs> tells me he tells me he's like this is just me not thinking about work. I'm not thinking about work. I'm not thinking about bills. I'm not thinking about just anything that stresses him. He, he, he's like a a character and he can do something different than actually thinking about what's going to happen next day, the next day at work, things like that. Oh, so that must be it. I'm glad I'm not alone. (laughs) Yeah. So so I, I completely understand that. And sometimes you just need something that's way out of your daily routine. Mm -hmm. Just not think about anything else. Yes. Yes. So tell me, what are some of your goals for this year? How how would you like 2019 to end for you? Oh my gosh. You (laughs) know what? This, the word for 2019 for me Uh was action. Okay. So I've been taking action and you know, the, I'm super excited about my scripture writing journal that is coming, becoming a, a physical product. Okay. So I am, I would like to launch that in on Amazon. It's going to be a ah, okay. Yeah. Good. So that is awesome. And then, um, of course, podcast Yes. and rise up women group. I already launched that. It's available in Facebook group. It's like rise up women movement. And, um, you know, the growth is slow, but because I am asking three simple questions. If you can't answer those three simple questions and you're, you know, I do check the profile of each one and make sure they're not a fake account. Yeah. Um, because I want that place to be a, uh, a safe place to share. And, you know, so it's slow growing, but it, I launched that group and I'm excited, excited about that. And, um, so that those podcasts, journal and, um, rise up women group. And then of course my coaching program, those four, if I could do all, all four by the end of this year, I would be so happy. That would be a breakthrough year for me. Yay. Oh, I'm so excited. And I'm, I'm going to manifest it for you. Um, I, I hope that all your, your yearly dreams come true. Yes, thank you. you. Good vibe. <laughs> Five. <laughs> well, where do you see yourself in five years? Oh gosh, um, five years. You know, I I always think about that. Five okay. years from now, I will be. Oh my goodness, like <laughs> close to sixty. Oh my god, I will be fifty. You don't look like you don't look anywhere near that. Oh my gosh, <laughs> five years. I can't. I just can't think about. You know those long term but I do want this rise up I I envision rise up women movement to be much bigger than what what it is now okay and I would love to be able to help and inspire as many women as possible and that this movement to be a a positive one okay yeah and I think it will yeah, I'm really excited for that. Thank you. I'm excited too. <laughs> Who's your hero? Who do you look up to? Well, my life coach is Jesus Christ okay. Himself, and um, I do um, I do go back to the Bible a lot. Um, and my pastor uh, in California, I haven't talked to him, but yeah, I do. It, um, his words and guidance weighs a lot to me so yeah those two i think that's nice that's excellent and okay so now i'm gonna move it on to from you know more serious to a little bit more fun (laughs) this is what i call i call this like a rapid fire where you just kind of like answer quickly okay (laughs) oh gosh (laughs) what is your favorite song oh gosh um 
the first thing that comes out come, comes up to me is I've got a beautiful name. Okay. Uh, I think Hillsong. Okay. Yeah. And favorite movie? Notebook. <laughs> okay. Oh, I love that movie. <laughs> and I'm sure a lot of people love that movie. Mm -hmm. um, do you have a favorite book? Right now, Big Magic. Oh my God, I love that book. Yeah, I love so that book. It actually really impacted me. Yeah. Until then, The Shack was actually one of my favorite books. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Do you have a favorite podcast? Oh gosh, please don't make me limit. I have several. Okay. Have James Whitmore, uh, Mind Your Business. Okay. Amy Porterfield, um, Pat Flynn. Okay. Rick Warren, uh, Daily Hope. Um, yeah, those are my, like, per oh, and Achieve Your Goals by Hal Elrod. Oh, those, oh, are, nice. those okay. are Okay. All right. I love podcasts because, you know, it gets me yeah. a day, especially when I'm having a hard day. Um, mm -hmm. I just put one on and it, it really helps me. Yeah, that's all I do all day. <laughs> <laughs> so, so every time I go in the car, podcast. Yes. You know? Yeah. Or doing chores, podcast. I know, yeah. My kids tell me to take my headphones off. So I'm <laughs> like, Mom, pay attention to us. <laughs> yeah. uh, I know that we shouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah. but now, you know, when they become teenagers, they're, they have headphones themselves. Yes. So yeah. it's like, wow, you're, you have your head, headset yeah. on. Uh -huh. You're like, pay attention to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. What is your favorite food? Thai. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love Thai. Okay, so I'm a baker. What's your favorite dessert? Oh, um, <laughs> actually, I like those, the cake that had tons of fruit on it. Okay. Um, yeah. Like fresh fruit on top, like a cake. Yes. Okay. Oh. I'm a cake person more than pie person. My okay. husband is, and my boys are like pie people, but I like cake. Oh, I love that. I'm a cake decorator. So. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Try that. <laughs> um, okay, so before we go, tell me, what are you most grateful for? I am grateful for life and my family. Yes. Okay. My family. Uh, you know, sometimes I wonder, how do, do, do I deserve them? They are just, you know, uh, they're my life and you're so lucky they might, yeah. might not say mom are you sure that's yeah. you? <laughs> but i think god gave me boys because yes. um, you know i don't know why he didn't give me girls but he gave me boys and they are really loving and kind and they're fun yeah even though and I, I love don't... that I love that you went through so much and you have boys so God I feel like God gave you boys to change the world oh thank you yeah. well I didn't I haven't looked at it that way yeah <laughs> especially yeah. what you what you went through um that I, I feel like that's what is meant for you to change I know you want to help women but I think through your boys you can you can help women that is so true. You know, there are, a, you know, when I first started this movement, mm -hmm. I was thinking, what about men? There are men who are abused yeah. and that's both sides. But, you know, because I'm a woman, I, I, you know, I focused on women, but there's another side to this. Mm -hmm. Another side is men who abuse, they need to change. Yeah. They need to realize that is not okay. But I have not really seen men stepping up and say, here, let's have a movement to support these men who need help. Yes. You know, putting them in jail doesn't really help the world. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? Because there are I'm people. Excited. I'm excited for your podcast because I feel like that would be a great topic. It's talking mm -hmm. to men. That um, is I, I, I like that. <laughs> they, have to, they have to come to realization. They need to change. Yeah. yeah. Can you share some words of wisdom or what, you, what I'd like to call, because my podcasts are released on Mondays. So oh. what I'd like to call some Monday motivation for my listeners. 
Monday motivation. Um, forgive yourself. Okay. Forgive yourself. Give yourself permission to be you. Okay. You know, I think that is that is so important to have a voice. And if you really don't know how to, then just pray, God, please help me find my voice. Okay. You know, I think that's so important to remember, mm -hmm. to remember your voice. All right. Thank you for that. Yeah. And um, before we say goodbye, is there anyone that you would like to shout out? And tell oh, them how awesome. No, I didn't think about this. <laughs> you, you edit? No. <laughs> no. You edit it out? Oh, gosh. <laughs> I hear your cat in the background. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> right, let me think. I, you know what? That, this is something. There are so many people that in my life, like I said, my pastor, Pastor Fred, who had, it's just, who has been a, big influence on my life and um my coaches you know uh, th th there's just so many people <laughs> <laughs> and that's amazing it's it's nice to have so many people to, sh to yeah. shout out um but the first one of course pastor fred um he has helped me a lot um, during the difficult times, even though I haven't talked to him for a while, mm -hmm. he always is, you know, his words meant, mean, meant a lot to me. So I still remember those words okay. that he said to me. So I do. And um, do you mean the shout out to like somebody who's done? To anyone, anyone like something like um, in the beginning of my podcast, I shouted out my husband because he's always pushing me to do everything oh that that's so do. nice yeah. that reminded me okay that reminds me my son my first oldest he's 23 i have to give him a shout out because he is the one who have, have gone through so much but he's always thinking about somebody else he's always thinking about helping other other people helping his dad okay. and um even though even when he was um i think sixth grade when he decided he wanted to live with his dad it broke my heart i almost cried every day but he he told me mom if i'm not there when i'm not there he drinks and i don't want him to drink okay and he went back and he said, I need to be here to help him. It wasn't his responsibility, but he took that on him. And I, it broke my heart. But he's that type of guy. Mm -hmm. And also now he's going, going for his dream, which is he's a producer, music producer. Mm -hmm. Actually, my podcast cast intro music, he's, oh. I asked him to do it for me. Oh my God, that's so exciting. Um, I'm really excited about that. But he's going for his dream. And at one time he told me, Mom, if I can do this for the rest of my life, I would never work a day in my life because I love it so much. Oh. And that stuck with me. Yeah. It is so true. Mm -hmm. If you're so passionate and if you can make that your business, yeah. you will never work a day in your life. You love it so much. That's true happiness. Yeah. So I, yes, I totally shout out to my son. Yeah. All right. <laughs> it is awesome. I think his produce, producer name is Nobu. Nobu. N O B U. Shout out to Nobu. <laughs> yes. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Now, where can we find Mickey before we come? Oh, yeah. Find you and the Rise Up Women's Movement. Okay, so Facebook is the best place because that's where I hang out. Facebook, you can look up uh, Mickey Sturgis. I have a personal page and a business page. And business page is the one that I hang out the most. And then Rise Up Women. Um, there is a Rise Up Women movement page, but I don't hang out there too much. But I do hang out in the group. So if you are interested in um, being a part of this group, join the group. You have to answer three questions and you have to have a legit profile. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's where I hung out. And I do have IG, um, Instagram account. 
What is your Instagram name? It's um, personal one is Mickey Sturgis and okay. the other one is Rise Up Woman. Okay. Yeah. Uh, awesome. You guys heard it and you guys can find Mickey there on Facebook yes. and on Instagram. And- I, I, I love to have, um, I, I love to receive messages. So please send me a message. That's, that's fine with me. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much, Mickey. And it was so much fun talking to you today. Yeah, I felt so many emotions. It was like, you know, oh my God, it was an awe. I was shocked and, and, and it was fun at the end. So thank you so much for that. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, thank you for joining me today on the Pink Sugar Podcast. And until next Monday. Bye. Bye. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in to today's episode of the Pink Sugar Podcast. And if you found yourself empowered, motivated, and inspired by today's episode, share it with all your friends and family and let them know about the Pink Sugar Podcast. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, and on Twitter at The Pink Sugar Podcast. For more episodes and information on any one of my guests, visit me at www.pinksugarpastries.net forward slash podcast. Thank you guys. Stay awesome. Bye.